everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the season finale of uh, Hot Seat with Penzola. And thank you so much for the, 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 the show. Um, and I mean, I started Hot Seat with Penzola purely because I want great dialogue around, um, you know, societal norms uh, or um, conversations that uh, we, as a, we, we, we as a society uh, really don't want to tackle. And I felt that there, were, there was a lot of unwritten rules and, and, and um, how can I put it, um, unwritten rules and, and, and norms that we were conforming to, which I felt needed a discussion. Um, obviously, we, you know, I'm crafting these topics as we go along. Uh, season one was great, I think, um, but I mean, I'm hoping that season two is going to be even more greater. Um, you know, unfortunately, our first episode uh, guest is, is not here to join us tonight, but uh, we started our very first episode on the hot seat with um, a topic that speaks to beauty, a topic that, uh, you know, is... is in the hot seat, we wanted to unpack how society views beauty. Um, because I remember when I was growing up, um, it was a case where if you were light skinned, you were considered to be beautiful, and if you're dark skinned, you know, you they you know they'd call you movie movie or whatever, you know. But that is what Gatle and I were talking about, and I'd like uh, to see if we can't play you Gatleho's trailer uh, so that you can see what what some of the conversations that were. Were, were, were taking place on that episode. Let's see if we can get... Do you think you're beautiful enough? Remember now where, where, where the world has moved, mm. uh, Penny? Mm. We are more into social media. You take like the natural picture you posted, you are not you are not beautiful enough mm. you understand so you need so the filter why are we doing this mm. you know initially like why are we putting ourselves so much under pressure mm. to be beautiful um yeah and then we we moved on to episode four which uh the episode was was about having a child and then because society considers that you know when you have a child already you are considered to be damaged and therefore chances of you getting married and finding somebody that's going to love your child uh, as as their own child are very slim and in this case you know our guest actually you know found somebody um that they 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 loved um and that loved their child as, as, as their own. So, yeah, Upumzila couldn't join us tonight uh, because one of her kids is in, her, in hospital and her hearts are with her and hopefully that her child gets better. Um, but yeah, if we can get a tech guy to play her trailer. So, Welcome to another episode of Penzola, which is on the hot seat with Penzola, obviously. Um, today we're talking about a very, very sensitive subject, um, which has got to do with having a child first before you get married. And when you do get married, you marry somebody that's not the father of the child. Well, Penny, thank you so much for having me. Yes. Uh, I can already feel the, the, the heat. <laughs> Right. It's different. I will say that we will call it the same thing. 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 We will call Morning. 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 <laughs> Good evening. 
Oh, <laughs> sa bonga. <laughs> we love you, Mbote. <laughs> So so my my episode was about uh, raising a girl child believing that marriage is the ultimate is the, is the ultimate goal. Welcome to the hot seat with Penzola. Thank you so much for tuning in again. Um today I my, I have Umbali as my guest. Today we're talking to Umbali about raising a girl child believing that you know getting married is an achievement. And everyone close to me that mm. there was a wife and a husband and children. There was that imbalance that I could sense. It was something that was set, it needed to happen. By you not wanting it, obviously, you know, it was a sign of challenging the status quo. They were really not happy about it. So they told me that now that you have a house, then it means you're never going to get married. So I shared with the viewers my journey in terms of being a rebel and saying it's not going to happen in my lifetime. I'm not going to go through this thing. So I had interesting views from friends, from colleagues, from everyone that engaged on the topic. And that in as much as uh, in our lifetime, a, a girl child was raised and groomed to be the, the, the wife, somebody's wife, such that even in the morning, before you wake up, they will say, wake up, where are you going to get married to if you don't, if you, if you can't wake up in the, in the morning? So, we were kind of happy when I was not full, Ganji. Yeah, so, 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 interesting views there because uh, people that are, that are divorced reached out and said, I get you fully. And if I had the other way, I wouldn't even gone through marriage. And some people said, you know what, my first marriage was a disaster, but I would give it another chance. I, you, you, you brought what I wanted to highlight in this conversation. Um, I'm Anna. Well, my studio name is Anna V, as you can see. But my episode was about discrimination of women and just in the workplace. So what um, I think that's the beauty of this platform, um, Hot Seat with Penzola. It makes you have a conversation and not feel like you're actually being an, being interviewed. You sort of you you're sort of able to bring out your thoughts and deep and dig deep into that. So a key thing that happened after I watched my episode, um, the whole Black Lives Matter that came up after the killing of George Floyd, the whole I Can't Breathe movement, it just made me think that, it made me realize that this fight against racism is the same fight that us women are fighting against patriarchy. And the same way that we are trying to get um, people in the minority in, within our country to understand that we matter and we actually deserve a voice and a say within our own country. It's the same way that us women feel about um, living here. I mean, women are being killed on a daily basis. And honestly, as a woman, I also feel like I can't breathe from this patriarchy. And so the more women that get into the workplace and that demand equal work and equal pay, it it feels it feels uncomfortable for men because obviously it's going to be less of them. But that's not actually what's happening. There's there's enough pie for all of us. So yeah, um, I really enjoyed my episode and thanks, Penzola. Um, thanks for that dialogue and conversation that you allowed me to have. Well, thank you, Anna. Because without you, then I would you know we we wouldn't have had that conversation. And I must say that I I enjoyed the way that you've ex you explored the subject and you you know and the way in which you presented your 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 facts it didn't sound you know it, it there was no emotion to it and i like that because sometimes when we when we speak with emotion you are you are always seen as one sided and not having considered different sides to a subject but i liked what you brought onto the table you brought a lot of facts and you gave a lot of examples. Episode eight was a um, an eye opener for me. Um, and uh, we spoke about alcoholism and substance abuse. 
Um, and before I go on, let us see if uh, we can play the trailer for episode seven. Um, and uh, yeah, so that we can remind people what uh, Anna and I spoke about. But on the hot seats, I have Anna, who's also a career woman doing well for herself in one of the big organizations in the country. And Anna will be joining us and discussing discrimination of women in the workplace. Discrimination doesn't mean all of us being discriminated the same way. Your colleagues, yeah. why do I need to submit to my colleagues? Because I guess that's why we have the term you know, boom. Yeah. Why else do we have it? Yeah. You know. The lucky thing with me is that I had a father who kept telling me that I'm beautiful. And anyway, so now moving to episode eight, you know, uh, the reason I had the guest and I wanted us to talk about uh, alcoholism and substance abuse, it, it was really to understand the story of the addict. Um, and because I find that we as a society are quite judgmental towards addicts. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, the, the, the story I wanted to come to bring forward was let's understand where the, where the addict comes from. We judge them because we say they got themselves into it, which they did. You know, a glass of wine leads to a bottle of wine leads to two bottles of wine. And you get yourself there, Georgie. <laughs> you know, but I mean, once, once, once the substance has taken over, guys, you've lost the you've lost the, the control, and you don't realize when you're losing control. And I think my that interview was an eye opener because I now can understand what type of support an addict um, needs from their family, from their friends. Um, and, and, and especially, you know, Tato shared with me who couldn't be with us again tonight. And, 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 and I really want to say well done to Tato. He's been clean for four years now. And he's, he, he, and it's still a, it's still a journey. He says to me, he still counts a day. He takes it a day at a time because the, the triggers are there, you know. He, he can still pick up a bottle tomorrow if the trigger comes and, 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 and relapse. But we pray for him, we're with him so that he can continue. Um, I'd like to see if we can play the trailer as well for, 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 for Tato at, at, at the time when we've obviously played all our, all our other trailers. We, we do seem to have a delay. Um, and I really want to appreciate everybody else that's watching uh, with us and understanding, you know, technology can be a challenge, especially when you're trying to go live. But thank you so much, guys, for, for joining and, and, and letting us know um, what it is that you're hearing and not hearing. Please keep us informed. The, the idea is for us to engage with you. Please keep those comments going as well. I really want to know what your thoughts are in this uh, in, in, in these discussions. Welcome to another awesome show of Hot Seat with Penzola. Thank you for tuning in once again. Today we're talking about a very sensitive subject, which is substance abuse. And today I have Utato, who's going to share with me his journey of substance abuse. He's currently recovered. I think he's been clean for about four years. So that's that's an awesome achievement. It's a sensitive issue. No one wants to talk about it. People feel embarrassed. Once you're on the substances, something triggers uh, um, the, the desire to want to stay there because drugs are a sanctuary. So I got into it um, as a social thing. Then my first interaction with drugs uh, was in with, with cocaine. How expensive is this cocaine? When I started, it was probably around 250 a bag, okay. uh, and it's a gram. I'm from Soviet. Mm. And I used to think drugs like this, you won't find in Soviet. Oh, go Soviet. Yeah. There's a place called Madagascar. Um, I would Insolent. say exactly where it is. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Those that know will know. Yeah. But literally every second house is a drug den. So yeah, let's uh, uh, move on to episode nine. I, I've got my episode nine. Episode nine, get to speak to me, please. Good evening, everybody. My name is Michelle Mabasso. Um, thanks for having me again, Penny and the team. My topic was about um, single parenthood, 
raising a child on your own. And I got to share my journey. I've got a, a nearly 14 year old young man. I shared my joys and my, the goods and the bads in raising my son. And um, yeah, um, the feedback I got of every, the whole interview was, was quite good. People were commended me very much on, sometimes it, it, it will make it seem like it, it's difficult. Yes, it, it's got its moments, but um, it's all about the love for your child and you wanting to make it work and wanting to raise your child the way you want them to be like. So yes, it has opened a whole lot of um, single ladies of my age and uh, it has opened their eyes to see to to see and accept that you know sometimes uh, especially in relationships you cannot control the other person but the minute you guys have made this baby and this baby is they um you have to put the baby's best interest at heart so it was it's just all about that and yeah i'm glad i shared it with the world and penny thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my views Zola, thank you again for tuning in. If it is your first time tuning in, please subscribe to this channel. We welcome all the likes as well as comments. And today's topic is one that speaks to being a single parent. Can you raise a, 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 a good child as, as a single parent? I mean, that's really the topic that we want to unpack today. I have Michelle. Um, thank you so much for agreeing to join me on the show, Michelle. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Uh, talk to me about your journey of motherhood. Um, I know that you have a son. Please tell us about that. <laughs> oh wow, it's been a journey. The presence of the other parent with their financial portion would make would would obviously make a difference in in raising your son. And you asked, "Where's my dad?" Or mm. do you have my dad's number? This person used to bath, and I used to bath him mm. up to ten years. Yes. Now, he locks the bathroom door. I mean, it doesn't help you bad-mouthing his dad. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, even with the whole thing of wishing single moms every five days, I don't even really think that's right. Season finale episode, episode 10. And I, I specifically chose 10 episodes because, you know, having started this channel in March this year and looking at how far I've, I've gone, it's been an amazing journey and I didn't want to, you know, I, I felt the need to pause and, and be thankful and close off a, 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 and celebrate the achievement before I, 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 I up my game for the next thing. So, um, and I know Yonela is, she can't wait to talk guys, but I, I will allow her, I will allow her to talk to us about the last episode of season one. Hi everybody, my name is Janelle Namase and on my left I have Bianca Khadere, my older sister. We were doing season one, episode 10, the closing of Kenzola. <laughs> um, I'll hand over, <laughs> over to my sister to take us through what we experienced uh, with the episode and the feedback that we... No, we fight. Guys, <laughs> like we don't speak for months. There's a time with my sister, we wouldn't speak for months. Um, and when we finally spoke, look, I don't think we really addressed the matters at the time, but when I needed her, she was there for me, you know. And that's the bottom line of siblings that like we'll fight, but in the day, we need to be there for each other. And we shouldn't allow um, the fights to fester to a point where we cannot come out of them and fix them, you know. I think that's very important. We need to engage with our siblings because this is our first form of friendship or first form of engagement you know and especially if the gap is not that big it, it's we need to really uh, drill down to what the issues are between siblings and sort it out because there's no one that's more important to you. um okay well yeah from my end, you you, you do you do only have two minutes, guys. Like don't, don't give me a whole yeah, yeah, close. Um they don't see when we fix our issues. So for them, they still have that perception perception of yeah, yeah. and we hardly get along, you know what I mean? So I would understand where people came came from um saying some of what we were saying was lies, but guys, I mean 
It's all the truth. DM me. I'll share but, it to you. Let you know. <laughs> but, but, but what if you guys lie? You are known for lies. What must happen? What can you might happen? Ah, never. Hey. We are not liars. Those that are on this live, uh, who's here? To be lying, tell them how much we fight. <laughs> <laughs> we fight in front of them. <laughs> We don't hide anything. Okay, cool, girls. I I, I I appreciate you. I appreciate you making the time to come and talk to me about that. And in fact, the the feedback I got, uh, you know, outside of all the feedback, um, I got feed. I got a call from my mom, and I mean. My mom, you know, was was touching, and she 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 said to me, you know, she she longs for such sibling love, you know, and um, and obviously, you know, she and I are like besties now, you know. Um, but yeah, I think she was touched by your episode, guys. So if an, if 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 somebody as old as my mom was touched by your episode, you know, it does, you know, it it it, it certainly means that. It, yeah, you, you can be mature sometimes. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but thank you so much, guys. I think it was it was an insightful discussion. And um, yeah, like I said, my mom was touched by it. And that can only mean that you you, you spoke sense, right? Um, and, and guys, moving on, I mean, after my last, uh, after this last episode, I, I, I invited a very, very special person who is, my number one support, well, number two, now that I've said my mom's number one. Um, and, and, and Ukani, can you ex- Of course, of course, <laughs> and you have to. Yes, no, but thank you so much for inviting me. Um, I feel, Uguti, every episode, you know, I learn, I grow. And um, if I can, you know, um, be changed and transformed by, you know, all these episodes, you can imagine, Uguti, what that does to, to the world. So that's something that, and every time, you know, I listen to an episode, I can pick up one or two things that I can identify with personally. And I'm like, yeah, this is actually what we need. You know, we need that fresh voice. We need, you know, yeah. something that is yeah. real, that is happening and impacting everyone. So um, my my highlights, basically, would be, you know, the conversations, first of all, if beauty, can we start with beauty? Or would see there's so much pressure yeah, on yeah, everyone. Yeah. Would see, yeah. you must look this certain way, your hair must be this certain way. And as Africans, we are starting with the definition of beauty, but my definition of beauty is like this. And I'm gonna wear my crown, you know, yeah. when my crown yeah. doesn't necessarily have to be long, straight hair, you know, silky. I can do my African hair, you know, yes, because yes, yes. I- Right, thank you so much, Priscilla, for joining me on the show today. Um, and we're talking about hair. Um, when the school that I went to mm. as a child, we were required to keep our hair very short. Around me, they did not. I don't have a memory of anyone that had natural hair. Yeah, you know, it certainly it was our own hair. Why was it not good enough? Here, even you know, I had full comments like you know, people look like they haven't bathed. We've got, yeah, yeah we've got apologies and mm-hmm. So we've got people mm-hmm. that, you know, we are now starting to look up to who are owning those spaces. You know, they're taking up space as well, you know? Yeah, so I, yeah, I, I absolutely. Really, yeah, I really love that. Um, the the same-sex marriage, I mean, it, it's such a tab- to other people, it's such a taboo conversation, you know? But then, look, we had the conversation and people are loving it. And if yes. you look around you, there are so many queer you know, people, and we just need to find a way to, to you know, embrace them because they're people too, you know, yeah, just because yeah. they were suppressed previously doesn't mean which they don't exist. We you know, so George came out and he owned it up and he, you know, he's oh, yes, he did. And, yeah, and we love him, you know. Yeah, we yeah. Love him. One thing that is key with every episode that you've had, all 10 episodes, one thing I've picked up, Uti, every episode can have a sequel. All of these yeah. episodes. Because if I look at the same sex relationship, same sex marriage, you need to talk to the parents that are raising queer kids. 
you know they need to know how do you raise a queer child how do you yeah. support them you know yes. and then there's children yeah. who are who are in who are raised you know by 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 couples who are in the same state you know exactly so they, yeah. they also have dynamics so how do you yeah. raise such a child you know when mm. they go for these mm. um school activities you know they look at funny so how does the child own that up and not you know shrink because oh yeah. wow i don't have a mommy i don't have this you know how do you make oh, I have two mummies and two dads yeah. yes i've got two yeah. daddies yeah. and two mummies you know how how's that dynamic working so like all of them the the um umichelle coming up and talking about um being a single parent yes it's it's a very a real thing in our society we all know which there's so many single uh parent house Uh, but we yeah, still have yeah, a child. Yeah, yeah, so can yeah, we just yeah. come together and do this? And they yes. call it co-parenting. But that also comes with its own dynamics. So maybe yeah, that's even true. Yes. You can just, you know, build up build, all that. Build the, you know? yeah, the, the, the sequel Precisely. in all that. Yeah, no, yes, absolutely. Yes, that's something. Yes. That's, Ooh, that's Anna, yes, the discrimination that Anna spoke about. I'm so happy, Uti. She didn't just box it in the... in the workplace you know it's it's wider than that and she's correct to say witty it's really difficult being a black woman because first of all you have to fight the fact that you're black then yes. secondly, you have to fight the fact that you're a that woman you're a so it's, yeah exactly you know yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. A, it's it's a real conversation that we need to have and one thing penny that i think is is quite key is as parents what conversations are we having with our children now you know first of all to prepare them would see there's such a thing as gender based violence you know mm-hmm. there's such a thing mm-hmm. as you are black and if you are black these are the battles that you're going to fight yeah. you know so how what conversations do you have with your girl child what conversations do you have with your boy child you know and the a new phenomenon again people don't identify with any gender you know yeah. we're getting yeah we're getting asexuals now So what is that? Can we define yeah. it? And the reason why people don't want to identify with any gender is because of the stereotypes that we are discussing Correct. in this platform. Correct. You know? Correct. So yeah. if I say I'm a woman, then I'm expected to behave this way to and behave like play a woman. Yeah. precisely. Yeah. You know, Or so that to eat a guy, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. those are the conversations that we need to have. I mean, we in a pandemic right now. Um children are not going to school it was also announced yesterday that you know schools are going to be closed half the schools are going to be closed and so forth so as a parent this new phenomenon of online learning what yeah. is that how do you define mm-hmm. it how do you support mm-hmm. your child mm-hmm. you know so, so come on this season two is just going to be on fire there's just wow. too much you know i'm loving the ideas it's yeah. <laughs> coming and you yeah. know Yeah. Uh, George, oh George also touched on a very key thing which is depression to us like mm. people mm. that is so maybe we need to unpack that which is depression is real guys it exists lots of people who go to job one is um, um are suffering from e- e- depression you know um the alcoholism uh, piece the the drugs you know penny that that episode it really like shook me you know like mm-hmm. it really mm-hmm. took me out of my comfort zone because i was like you look at these people and rightfully like ushiro but you judge them you know you see this yes. these boys smoking in yaube and you are so judgmental but yes, if you look absolutely. at what what um what's the uh, utato utato yes yeah utato yeah. yeah. took, yeah. yeah. took us through that and it's it's such it's such um, a deep conversation that we need to have um yeah. and looking at it as well from family side how do you support loved one who's going through this what do you do mm. you know I, well, i was about <laughs> to say yeah, you, you you can try but you ain't going love it love it love it issues are just too big i no, no, absolutely them. Yeah, yeah. No, but congrats well uh, looking forward to season two, and we right here to support you thank you uh thank you Thank you so so much i appreciate every single thing that you said and because i know that it comes from a good place and this yeah, is what have been supporting me from from day one so thank you very much thank you and guys before 
Before we, we, we're moving towards closing, I just want to ask Bianca, Bianca, are you seeing any comments, uh, any questions, are there any problems, are people hearing us? Yes, people are hearing us and there's quite good comments, uh, so I'll just read some of them for you. Yeah, let's read some the of them, first, okay. The first one is from Zoe, I, I hope it's Zoe, G Mofogazi, saying you're doing great. Okay. Uh, then he or she also said mission put hot faces or to my law later he said loving it aliko proud of you penny pilisi was on so proud of you sis um for guys he also said what an, what an awesome summary of season one uh, this is a shout out to George. Uh, Pili Lezon, he says, hi, George. Hi, George. <laughs> uh, and then for guys, he also then said, well done all. And thanks for the expiring, thanks for the inspiring interviews. Oh, English yeah. almost did us there. <laughs> yeah. Never loved us. Yeah, okay, so we're right. still waiting. I somehow, okay, uh, let me just see. Um, okay, that, okay. All right. No, sorry. sorry okay, please. it's fine. We can move on now. It's okay. Um, um, so, yeah, I think uh, I've got a question for Ubong, yes? Because I know all of you shared when you were introducing yourself, your father-in-law said, you didn't tell us that. What did she say? <laughs> Penny, sorry, Penny, when you finish with Bongi, we've got questions uh, that are coming in now. So, uh, okay, okay. Yes, I'll come back to you guys and then we can answer the questions. But I just want to go to Bongi. Hey, Pelaya, she's at topic. What did your mother-in-law say? <laughs> what did she say? Or did she even watch it? Did she uh, even watch it? So, uh, I made her watch it. Oh, wow. And then, okay. She, she she asked a question to say, um, is this how you feel? I said, yeah, sometimes, you know, some of the things that um, I'm obliged to do, they make me feel in a certain way. They make me good. feel oppressed. Yeah, yes, they yeah. make me feel oppressed. She said, you know, um, I'm glad that we are talking about it. And I'll, I think I appreciate the fact that you are talking to me. You are not going to other people about it. Uh, yeah. I will do my best. I will do my best to make sure that um, whatever that we do, if you don't understand, I will come and explain it to you. Okay. Yeah. So okay. just ask me. I'll come and explain it. So I I know that she's an open person. She's she's open to feedback. Not that she agrees to everything. You know. Well, some of the things I get away with, but some no. She she's yeah. very strict as well. He commented to speak about such uh, many women, they fear actually, they fear to raise these issues because it might be viewed like umakoti or unruly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they just okay. take it as it comes. They just take everything that comes to them, whether it's oppressing them or not, they just accept and, 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 and move forward, you know. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Thanks, uh, thanks, Bongi. Uh, let's go to Bianca again because Bianca says that uh, there's a, there's questions. Bianca, talk to us. What are they asking? Okay, the first question is to Michelle. Um, what are your fears about raising a boy child alone, and how do you deal with them? Michelle, let me. Can you hear me, guys? Yes, we can hear you. What are your fears about raising a boy child alone? And the second part, Bianca? Sorry, so it's uh, what are your fears about raising a boy child alone and how do you deal with them? Yeah. The, my, my most fears, I, I would say, is um, being involved with the wrong people outside, like having bad friends who will, uh, you know, get him to be doing wrong things, get him into trouble. So, how I deal with it is. Obviously, we, we, the life that we're living now currently is quite open to it. all our kids at a very early age. So we all, I'm open to everything. I sit him down. We talk about everything. I show him stuff uh, that are happening uh, when we see other kids that are story or telling stories of uh, that are happening outside reality. I show him, re I expose him to reality, and and I, and I tell him that if you go this route, this is what's going to happen. If you hang with such a gang, this is what's going to happen to you. So that's my worst nightmare that could happen, especially to a, a boy child. 
that if you hang out with the wrong crew, a, a lot can go down and not up. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Any other one, Bianca? Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Michelle, for your answer. Marcy, we hope your question has been answered. Uh, we've got another question from Muzugi as well. Um, how does one deal with conflict in a relationship with their sisters when the sisters have a stronger personality and maybe they want to avoid fighting? Uh, oh, <laughs> you know who can answer that, that question? Right? Right? <laughs> so you know, I, like... <laughs> You can answer that, okay. In our relationship, um, I'm perceived to have the one of the stronger personality. So uh, what I've seen that my siblings do, they tend to avoid me at a point when we have a conflict and they wait for, I think when the situation allows and when everything, ever, everyone's a bit calmer to then uh, ask or engage on the conflict. So they always come up with humor or they ask stuff that'll make me laugh or we go back to a uh, part of an our lives we were laughing and we were happy and then we'll laugh a few moments and then after for the right moment when they are calm and i think also when you are also calm and then you then see obviously you know them better and you'll see a way to enter um if you are afraid that when you guys engage in dialogue that it might raise or escalate very quickly the best way is to write them a message um they will read the message and they'll respond when they come and then after the messages then you can obviously then go into conversation um to add on to Bianca's one, yeah, no, definitely. Where she she has a stronger personality. So for me, um, when she's when I can see that she's upset about something or she's just not talking to me, I allow her to be and let her deal with whatever she's going through. And then once I see like a leeway in order for us to fix things, that's when I hit her with the humor because you already know <laughs> I'm crazy with the jokes. Right. So yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool, guys. Thanks. So I wanted to actually share or comment on Michelle's uh, uh, topic. So I've been a single parent for, for almost 16 years before I got married. And I was raising a son who is now 18. So it was a very, very interesting journey because, um, you know, I, I broke up with a daddy when I was five months pregnant. And from there, I was on my own. So I have learned to own this parenting uh, thing. It was a very, very bumpy road, but uh, what, what was interesting about it, is it, it, it was that when um, he finished his matric last year, I got a call uh, from my mom to say, you know, well done, sis. You, you, you did it. You just did it, you know, by yourself. Mm, 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 what, what, mm. So that feeling, that feeling, you know, because it's, it's, it's a very bumpy journey. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's moments in the seasons where things just don't go well. You know, they reach their teenage stages. They want to try out all these sort of things. I remember when she started, he started uh, smoking um, and he was just trying it out, but it was a very difficult time for us at that time because he, he he wasn't willing to listen to anyone he then tried alcohol they were girls exploring you know mm, sexually. Would have. Yeah. They would have. yes they would have and the dad was just nowhere okay yeah so yeah. but you know the the feeling after you have done it it's it's so amazing i look at him to a such a wonderful handsome man who is doing now his first year and I look at him and I say, wow, guys, you know, I've done it. This is me. You've done it. Yeah. This yeah. is me. So, yeah. Well done, Bongi. Uh, I, I have a question for Uma Shamase, Bali. <laughs> and it, I mean, I want to I wanna find out, did, uh, did your son actually watch the interview? Does he know about it? Has he seen it? No, he hasn't, but he knows where I stand about the issue. And okay. sometimes I fear because uh, sometimes during the week he said, you know what, but he often is the person that says, you know, when he's talking, he'll say, you can't do this. Can't <laughs> <laughs> so, so this week, like, you 
know what? I think I must just have a child alone. I don't need a wife. I'm like, oh no, please don't okay, go there. Okay. <laughs> 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 I see. I, I, see I, I, I see. You want. You want to. You want to channel him very differently from where you are. I suppose. No, I want him to have an independent view. I want him to have what he truly wants. I don't want my decision to influence his. If you want okay. a family set up with a wife, even if it's polygamy for that matter, I really want you to do that. Okay. I don't want to, 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 to influence anyone. This was my personal journey. It was influenced by my upbringing. And yeah. I took it from when I was a teenager. I said, you know what? I'm never going to go through this. And yeah. I stand by my truth. But I don't want it to influence anyone else. Okay, cool. Thanks, Mbali. We've got a hand from Kanye. Kanye, talk to us. Yes, actually, you know, I can so much resonate to the conversation that you had, Nombali, and I shared it with my friends because I've got a very wide circle of friends who are single and now nah, well, they just decided, Ubuti, this is not for me and I own this. So yeah. I shared the episode now nah, and, you know, when you go to... In, 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 it was so <laughs> because I laughed now, at that as well. It's it, very late. It, it's so, I don't know if it's a good thing or what, but <laughs> then, <laughs> when you get to a certain age, my abuse with how what mutus or so like you know, yeah, like, yeah. so it was so hilarious because most of us, I mean, Nami, I, I'm, I'm working into marriage much later in my life, you yeah, know, yeah, majority yeah. of my life I was single, Nami, I was doing my own thing, my, my own house, you know, career, and yeah, so forth. Yeah. So, yes. my friends, so that topic I can so much resonate with, and I'm saying that we are not raising our kids to be wives or husbands or whatever. Yes, we're yes, raising absolutely. future CEOs, we, we, you know, we're raising kids who are, um, uh, you know, are not afraid to speak up, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, so absolutely. that's that's it. confidence is everything, you know, and we're yeah. not saying that you need a man to be successful, that's not the narrative we're driving now we say oh, honey yes, do you true. you know yeah be the person yeah. that you want to be yes, not the person yes. that society expects you to be so very that. well done on that topic yeah. i love it yeah cool yeah. great <laughs> hello everybody welcome back to hot seat with penzola and what we're talking about today is um how society views um same-sex relationships and you know why do they think the way that they think do you know what? I think in my younger days, um, there was a slight fear. You're just living a double life there, right? My only difference is my sexual preference, and yeah. that's in the evening, private, in my bedroom. Yeah. How do you deal with stereotypes from friends and fam about being gay as well as in the workplace? Well, you know what? What I would say is, Friends and family really know who you are and it doesn't make you any different. And I think what one should tell them is that, do you know what? Your sexual preferences doesn't make you different. Mm. The sexual preference happened in privacy in your own bedroom. And it's not, it's, I feel it's who it touches your soul in that moment. And what I will tell them is, do you know what? Do you still love me? Have you loved me a week ago? Why does that change? Now that you know I've got another sexual preference. Because that's a sad part. Suddenly when people hear you've got a different sexual preference, the whole attitude change. But one should then question how real was the love that felt? How real was that feeling? And I think the best thing to say is, you know, I'm doing me the best I can. And if you can't handle that, I have to be true to myself. And that's where authenticity comes in, you know? And, and I think that's where the difficult thing comes in when you're younger, because people confront you and you don't need know how to answer that because you don't know that you're different. You, what you are feeling is natural. And so often we try to force people into a box. So I would say how to deal with that is just to say, do you know what guys, I am who I am. Accept me for who I am or, or let me be me and if I don't fit into your box, then just let me go. But don't abuse me because of who I am and because of my preference. Because that will not change. Because in reality, and I think that's a sad part, so often 
and that's why I'm very, kind of what you said earlier, one have to address that, you know, how does parents treat their children, you know, in a, in a, when they're sexually different? You know, because it's not a choice. At the end of the day, you're born like that. And and my biggest, my biggest thing I had to make was I had to make peace with God. That he created me this way. It's not a choice, guys. And and I think that's a sad part. So often people think being gay or have the same sexual preference is a choice. It's not. Mm. It's the same as being born white or black or colored or Indian. Inherent, that's your sexual preference. That, mm. That's how your DNA function, you know? And, and I mm. think that's why it's so beautiful. I, I sat here tonight and at some stage I thought, I'm, I'm surrounded by these beautiful African queens. And in my heart, I'm so, so joyful and happy to be part of this journey and, and included in all of this. Yeah. Because for yeah. too long, we've been excluded on, on race, on sexual preference, on stupid things. Well, inherent, we're all the same, you know, and, and I think that's why I want people to be proud of who you are, because there's a reason that you are you tonight. No matter of race, no matter of color, no matter of sexual preference, God had a reason that you are you and I am me tonight. And let's be proud of that and do us do the best we can. Let's do you, boo. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> Well I done, say, Georgie. I want to say I drink to that. <laughs> awesome. Uh, guys, this, this has been amazing. And, and, and yeah, I'm really sorry. First of all, there's so many glitches. And yeah, we didn't, you know, it didn't go according to how I wanted it. But, but we made it. But we made we it, made guys. It. We really did. Uh, yeah, guys, I, you, I, can't, I can't help but feel, you know, grateful and thankful for, for your support. You guys could have chosen to be elsewhere tonight. Anna's got a whole tooth that's sore, but she still rocked up. She still put on a weave and she still put on lipstick. Um, <laughs> and 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 I'm really, I really appreciate it, guys. Season two is gonna be smashing. I am going to up my game. Um, you know, I've learned a lot in the first season from a technical perspective, even from a shooting and from an editing perspective. I think I'm going to really, really up my game and just awesome. produce quality content. Uh, I'm open for this for, for, for suggestions. I do have a very thick skin, guys, so don't feel like you're crossing the line. Shoot at the suggestions, critique what you're seeing. I can take it. I'm strong. Um, but because I know it comes from a good place, that's, that's the only reason I'm going to accept it. Um, because I know it, it's, only, it's only meant to make my show great. Um, and yeah, I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was a lovely discussion. Thanks, Yonela. Thank you, guys. Thank you. But yeah, I'm... We love you. I'm feeling, of course. I know you love me, Moss. Why else would you be here? Why else would you be here? <laughs> I love all of you guys. It was uh, amazing. Thank you. It was. Aww. Thank you so much. I can't you, George, after the lockdown. <laughs> after lockdown, George. We George, have to after be lockdown. Bye, <laughs> whole guys, group. Bye, Cool. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'm going to cut now. I love you guys. Bye, thank guys. you. Bye. Bye. Love you too, friends. Bye. 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 <laughs>